Establishing battlefield control. All right, hello everybody. Um, I am Mark. I'm here with some members of the Totem Arts dev team. We're here with Lava Dragon, Mr. Grease, and Rowboat, all here to discuss Firestorm and showcase some of the latest gameplay from our most recent build of the game. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so we are currently in a match. Um, we're on our map called Screen Sight. And I'm currently on Team GDI. So guys, we've kind of been um, working on this uh, for a long time now. And, you know, even just during my time with the team, I want to say that I've seen at least two or three different maps um, kind of launch and get tested. And we've got new features that have been coming in as well. Uh, we also have several questions, I think, that came from the community that uh, we're planning to answer throughout the time that we're playing the game today. Um, but yeah, we're in a match right now, and... We have around 40 players here who are testing it and kind of showing off what the game's capable of. Uh, so, if you guys aren't familiar, this is our Conquest game mode. Uh, it is a bit different from things that we've showcased before. Now, previously in one of our dev talks, we did uh, show that we would be doing an Assault game mode, which uh, was a more objective-based mode with an attacker and a defending team. Uh, similar to some other game modes from Battlefield. Uh, but this one is centric around outposts, so you have to capture and hold throughout the map. And if you look at the top of the screen, See the numbers up there. Uh, the first team to reach zero uh, will lose. <laughs> now that's what this uh, conquest game mode is. That's pretty much the basics of it. There are some secondary objectives you may see on the top right. You see the secure the Tacitus oh, fragment. There are different rewards and different types of missions that we have. Uh, some give special units, some give uh, just more focal forces. A lot of different things that can uh, happen in these games. <laughs> also, um, to differentiate it from maybe the Battlefield series is Conquest. We don't really calculate tickets like they do in Battlefield or Squad or Rising Storm or any other Battlefield derivative game you've seen so far. Um, Normally in those games, one life costs one ticket, and if it's a vehicle, maybe, it's a higher ticket cost. But with this, what we've tried to do is maybe de-emphasize the live counts of the teams and just emphasize the map control and, like, controlling the points. So uh, you can die and your team won't lose a ticket, but how it works is the more points your team has, the more resilience you have and the other team will start losing tickets so instead of getting kills and you know dominating the enemy team it's more about controlling the map working as a team and just this little change i feel um makes it a lot better in terms of just cqc because not everyone's focused on getting kills not everyone's focused on not dying and if you've played Battlefield 3 or 4 in the last couple of years, you know getting revives 
is not something people do nowadays, so... Yeah, I feel this little change is a really good direction with Conquest, to say the least. But I, Hello, and you Yosh. know... Oh, hey, Yosh. Hello? Hey. I'm still doing introductions. Yeah. Could we maybe go ahead and introduce ourselves? Yeah, let's all talk about everybody's role on the team. Yep. Uh, how, why don't you go first, Yosh? You're the newest person to come into the room. What? I, I feel like I'm like the least relevant person here. Well, you're the jump <laughs> check guy. I am the You're, jump jet guy. You, the jump you jets are the jump jet haven't been super relevant. Okay, it'd be fair. Jump jets. Now that I'm, they're now always, that I'm they're always relevant. Don't say. And yeah, jump jets are always relevant to talk about. Oh yeah, that definitely. Aspect. Yeah, they're relevant. All right. Anyway, let me uh, let me find a nice quiet spot that's not full of hunter seekers and bullets. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So yeah, I'm Yoshima. I think most people at this point. If they've been following, they would already know who I was, even though I did sort of leave for a while. But I'm back now, and yeah, I, uh, I usually program bad things, and then I overbalance things when people tell me that they're underbalanced, and then we balance them, actually. I'm, I'm the petty programmer, let's just go with that, yeah, that's what I am. Alright, and that, that about nice. sums me up. I can also answer questions and talk like a professional when necessary. That's right. not necessary. Alright. Alright, um, I'm Lava Dragon. I'll be a lead game designer for UE5. But for UDK purposes, I'm a level designer. I made the map you're seeing now and Phoenix. Nice. Oh. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I don't know. I'm the resident cat herder. Makes sense. Uh, beyond that, I don't know. I'm just trying to keep everybody happy. And Mark. Yeah, I'm. Uh, so I'm Mark. I'm with the uh, audio team. So some of the different voice acting and sound effects that you're going to hear in the game. Um, that's what I supervise and, and actually contributed to as well. Um, currently, you know, one thing that we're working on is the Cabal and Eva lines, but uh, one thing that we're really proud of is that each individual unit class has its own unique uh, personality and voice actor. So you're always going to hear different lines depending on who you play as in the game. And I'll go ahead. Uh, I'm Mr. Grease. You can call me Grease if you like. Uh, I'm one of the newest programmers on the team, and I will be focusing mainly on UE5 work, as my background is in the defense industry, so I'm pretty familiar with C++. So, But besides that, I also contribute to UDK a little, with small bug fixes, some future changes and whatnot. Most of the time I break stuff, but uh, Sarah usually uh, forces me to fix it, so it's all good in the end. That's me. <laughs> under a bunch of different names. Uh, now I do a lot of different things. Uh, my main focus throughout the years has been on game programming. Some of it uh, touched up the UI a bit. Uh, I'm just doing some administrative things. I get through. all the fun stuff. All the things nobody appreciates the uh, right before. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Make sure the game Sorry. downloads. Somebody's Sir, Sir, Sarah's being humble. Sarah's basically the glue that holds the <laughs> team together, I'd say. Uh, I have my moments, I'd like to say. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to like review uh, some of the recent additions that we've made, such as the Hunter Seeker? Can you tell us about that, Yosh? <laughs> do we want to say? Well, the Hunter Seeker uh, is attached currently to the Recon class, yes. And uh, I'm unsure if anyone's 
currently using one. I just died to one, actually. Uh, that's when I was in the server. Uh, yeah, everyone's so, using one right now. Well, Sorry, yes. You have the ability to show as, one off right now. As the smallest <laughs> introduction, uh, when they were first introduced, they were severely underpowered and very inaccurate. So, as I said, I they may have been uh, a little petty balanced. <clears throat> and now they're extremely accurate. And probably too good. But, yeah, so Hunter Seekers are in the game. You deploy them just like the recon drones on the recon class. You just click, you give them a target, you confirm that target, and you watch them do their thing and hope they don't get shot out of the sky. And there's a big obvious laser uh, whenever they start trying to hunt things. So everybody sort of knows what's up. And usually every gun gets trained on them. Really yep. hard to hit them down, though. Especially yeah. if you're in a vehicle. So if you're in a vehicle that doesn't have like a lot of uh, yeah mobility, it's ter it's terrifying. Yeah. It's terrifying. So in short, they'll probably be balanced to be more of a anti-heavy vehicle, but light vehicles we can easily kind of dodge them because we're not trying to like one to one. Right now they're almost one to one how they were in the RTS in terms of like they were just 100 percent accurate and they were just annoying. It's all get out. Yeah. So yeah, they they just killed whatever whatever they hit. So yeah, they'll be retooled to be more of a anti-heavy vehicle, but maybe a little bit more dodgeable by light vehicles. That or just uh, they also at the moment they don't take damage right from infantry weapons. It looks like, or how much I expected infantry weapons to do to them. So yeah, so they'll be retooled. But their functionality is, yes, they just kind of, they once you give them a target, they try to fly above the target, and then they do their uh, evil dive of death on top of them after screeching out loud. Yes. Or you're like me, and you can dodge Hunter Seekers and a Titan, because I just did that. Anywho. Or you're like me, or and you get constantly killed by Hunter Seekers and start crying. <laughs> <laughs> well, now everybody doesn't just spam vehicles. I have solved the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's actually surprisingly true. Yeah. Everybody I wants to be in a vehicle? All right. <laughs> Hunter Seekers, enjoy. Oh, hey, Mark, next time you spawn in, uh, you want to use the drop pod? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, let's show that off. Mm -hmm. Currently, I'm riding in an APC. Um, I'm the second uh, passenger, so that means that I am manning the turret on top. And APCs actually have, uh, we actually gave them a lot of uh, interesting features more recently as well. For example, they kind of serve as a, a mobile outpost for your team. Uh, when you deploy them on an outpost, they count towards um, the unit count at that outpost and can help you defend it. And they'll also uh, provide healing and ammo refills for your units as well. Oh hey, and, uh, and that's the first match down. Um, I die a lot more than I, uh, than I kill people, so you'll definitely see that as well. <laughs> Do we know what map we're going to go to next, everybody? Yep, uh, we're just loading up Pharaoh now, which is probably the most Tibson map that we have. <laughs> the most atmospheric one. I think Pharaoh's gone through the most changes out of any map. It's wild. Because Pharaoh was probably one of the first maps when I think it was Firestorm. Yeah, it was like the first one. So it's mm -hmm. it's literally seen every game mode change and you know, through all the updates. Plus there are more than a couple of iterations inside the like dev tools we're using currently, so Yo. Oh, I think we're in. 
almost. Were you on a there we GDI go. last match? Mark? Looks like it. Um, how about I That's show off gone. the... Okay. Yeah, let's we do can, that. Uh, we can move into a squad. Everybody in voice chat here. Yep, and one of you can hop into the second seat of my harpy so we can maybe show off the map a little. Awesome. So we are Team Nod now. Who's Team Nod? Oh, I am also Nod. <laughs> Welcome, to Nod. Welcome to Nod. Welcome to the Brotherhood. Yeah, well. <laughs> If you guys want to open the squad menu with a K, you can join the Foxtrot uh, Ooh. squad here. Of course here. you put Foxtrot. Uh, of course it's yep. Foxtrot. Alright, people Foxtrot. are demanding to know if uh, the game will support ray tracing and UD kick. If oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, how do I uh, how do I get in there? We, we also, yeah, okay. not just ray tracing, also like VR and whatever. <laughs> In the UDK? No. Yeah, that, that's a joke. That's a, for the record, yeah. that's a joke. Yeah. Yeah, is this map by Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Oh, yep, I'm in. Okay. Okay, do you have to... Hmm. I don't know. I don't think... Where's our squad at? Or did they all start at the base? Uh, I'm just running around currently. We may have to skip this map because it looks like yeah, we're having the looks king like... issue again. Unfortunately. Yeah. Maybe switch back to screen sight so we can get like a fresh view on that. Or we could switch. We could probably switch to Phoenix, but I'm not yeah, yeah. with that map either. <laughs> oh well. You can see the map. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can show it off. Like this yeah, is this, what? Is, this is Pharaoh uh, at five frames per second. I'm actually getting a pretty smooth uh, gameplay right now. Everything's looking pretty normal. Um, but yeah, you can surprisingly. You can really see that this one has the aesthetic of Tiberian Sun down to a T. Like. It, it probably has the most Tiberium fields. Uh, we've also got one of those vein monsters right in the middle of the map. And uh, if you walk up to it, it'll spew gas on you. So so don't do that. Um, if you want, I can demonstrate that for you. Yeah, go for it, Mr. Grease. Yep. I found my squad. Hooray. Oh, not only am I getting shot at, but I'm also dying from radiation slowly. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. Down he went. Thanks for the demonstration. No problem. Yeah, I know uh, one thing that I'm people dead. have been wondering about uh, over time has been about the, the, the fauna and the flora and all that jazz, because there's some really cool stuff in Tetris. And, so, and yeah. I know it's it's being worked on. Uh, <laughs> that's the biggest thing. Like all this stuff has to be created from scratch. That, that's that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing. To keep in mind that this entire project. Uh, you know, Renegade X was a copy of a, a game that was already made. Firestorm is a completely new game. Everything has to be created from scratch, so, you know, you got to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that actually was one of the questions that we had submitted to us, uh, both about the fauna and the forgotten. And uh, you can yes, actually was. see some traces of the forgotten in the game currently. Uh, for example, some of the side objectives that you will receive during the game are to reclaim forgotten uh, vehicles. So the original mammoth tank uh, that the forgotten inherited, that makes a return. There's some forgotten raider buggies and uh, also the original MRLS as well. Besides that, though, um, 
for other stuff like the Tib Fiend or other Tib Fawn like Visceroids. Currently, we don't really have the models for that. Um, if we did, we could maybe consider putting them in, uh, see how they feel, maybe iterate on them a couple times, but right now, we really don't have the models for any of that stuff, so unfortunately, that's not going to be a thing on release, from at least what I can tell. And that's part of the biggest challenge we're facing, really, because a lot of the stuff, as you said, has to be created from scratch. Like there, like there aren't, there are no uh, obelisks of Nod models r lying around that we can just grab in other games or Someone's whatever. Someone's going to prove you wrong in chat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it may, may be the one in CNC three, but how how would that work in like UDK? Like I, I don't know. So, um, so the biggest like the biggest. Thing stopping us from adding these things are basically lack of models, I'd say. Yeah, because I think the only real forgotten models lying around are for W3D, which they, they might be fine for like buildings, like the buildings from the uh, W3D engine, but uh, infantry, different story. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like yeah, buildings big, are big shout out. Wonky. Yeah. Yeah. Big shout out to the whole Reborn team and W3D Hub because without them, uh, I think we'd have like two buildings, maybe three. three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Especially those buildings. I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, are you in game? Seeing the map yet? Mm hmm. Because uh, I could talk he's... about the map. I am about to deploy in a drop pod just to show that off again. Okay, go ahead. And down we go. Oh, I'm going uh, over to the cliffs. I gotta go this way. You can actually pilot the drop pod a little bit and kind of guide it, but you know it is still gonna have a predetermined area where it can it can really move around in. So you're not just gonna just like make... you know launch all the way to the other base. Just make sure not to steer it into Tiberium if you don't want, like, a slow, painful death. <laughs> or the water. Or the water, yeah. So yeah, just tell us a little bit about Phoenix. This is a... Honestly, I, I really like this map. It has, I think, a really just interesting, like, dayside take on Tiberian Sun. Oh, I mean... You could pull up the mini map to show like the layout, but the whole idea of this map was the first GDI mission to Sun. I think it was Phoenix Base where you had to try to recapture yeah. that and stuff. But taking some few creative liberties, Phoenix Base is now an old Tib Dawn base instead. Mm -hmm. Just so you can provide some variety to show off the difference between Ren X assets and the new Tib Sun structures that we have. But this map was originally... Well, uh, the aesthetic of the map was originally Terrace, made by Nexus. Or old Command Conquer game mode. So I just took the aesthetic and say, well, I don't want to waste it, so... Mm -hmm. We could repurpose it for Phoenix, since he designed the aesthetic to be Arizona-based. So it was just a perfect match to have. Uh-oh. I saw one of our teammates uh, on GDI um, has one of the attack cycles that Nod has, so... Uh, oh. Like in previous yes. iterations, you can steal enemy vehicles. Do you say most people? No. Oh, yes. They do change color. I think that's already been shown before. They have to be unlocked first, though, so you can't really steal them from spawn. Someone has to use them, drop them, and then you can steal it, basically. Yeah, and then also, um, as you'll probably see as we get along through here, when you 
uh, capture an outpost, um, sometimes you'll have vehicles from your side spawn in. So, you know, as a reward for taking Phoenix Base, we might get a Wolverine or a Titan, for example. Um, if there were any enemy vehicles at that outpost before you captured it, oh, and there's a Devil's Tongue, I am dead. Um, those will blow up. So when you reclaim an outpost, you can't, you're not going to immediately take over enemy vehicles. That it was more of a, a good way to kind of ensure that if you're going to steal a vehicle, it's got to be a very strategic, calculated move to be able to pull it off. Someone in the chat uh, is asking, Mark, how are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, should we maybe think about slowly starting to answer some of the questions? That's yeah, I was about to say, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of questions. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of questions. Yeah. Just scroll on through Trant. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should get started with the ones that we collected up from the Discord server first. Um... Let's put a disclaimer. Let's talk about the UDK stuff first, and then reserve mm -hmm. all you five questions yeah, for tomorrow's that's stream. That's not a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sure. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, well, I guess I could just start from the top, and... Um, so one of the biggest questions is, uh, what is one thing that devs wish they could include in the upcoming release, but cannot? Buildings? I think every dev is going to have a similar answer for this, except for me, maybe. I mean, for I guess me... The, I guess that each of you have, like, a... Like, something you wish, like... Yeah. You know, could just work, <laughs> and you could get it mm. going. <laughs> but it just... Maybe you're just pulling your hair out, trying to get it to work, and it just not works. I mean, for most of us, the most obvious answer is base building, right? Because... Um, from what I know, at least, from checking the files, reading up the code, base building went through several iterations just to, you know, get it to run properly, be fun, have a match that didn't last 45 hours like a Supreme Commander LAN party, basically. So, it would have been really nice to be able to include this base building mode at launch, because even just playing what's left over in the editor, it's surprisingly enjoyable. and. It's completely different from most of what I've seen, especially in like uh, the most recent releases of FPS games and whatnot. So that would have been really nice to include. Other than that, I would have loved to be able to include more tip fauna, as we spoke about previously. Like, um, and maybe something, some stuff about the forgotten. Maybe if we could make be incorporate them, but unfortunately, we do not have the resources for that at this point in time. So, for me, it's those that stuff. I don't know about you guys, though. Pretty sure it's all just base building. <laughs> yeah, no, like everything else basically made it in. To be honest. Oh wait, well, I mean, yeah, just not. I guess not in really, general, but... I think in general it would be like uh, just yeah, our, the complex game mode we're going for versus just conquest. Mm. But I mean, then again, we don't know for post-release. There's a lot of content that can probably be slowly edited and optimized to work. Like assault, like honest to goodness, like assault mode was actually pretty fun. It was just, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm doing things. <laughs> yep. But yeah. Uh, even like just finishing assault mode. Um, but we could actually make that. You, honestly, the only thing for UE5 is just probably going Ooh. to be, <sighs> yeah, base building. I mean, I was never the base building guy. I'm super down with that, but eh, it was all right. Cool. Oh. 
I'm in a little okay, bit well, of a war zone here. <laughs> I, I was gonna say. Yeah. So another question, kind of leading into what some what was mentioned, um, are the, are the forgotten and Tiberian fauna going to play a role in game? We already answered that. The cow. I'm kind of confused I mean, how fauna is gameplay unless they're yeah. referring to like. No, there, yeah, there won't be any like AI fauna in the UDK, at least initially. I'm sure we have people that are interested in making models for them, so eh, they might end up there. Mm -hmm. Besides just making models, though, um, one of the biggest problems we're facing with UDK is. A lot of the stuff that we add is just too much for UDK. So UDK in itself is a version of Unreal Engine 3, but it doesn't really allow us to have source access. What do I mean by that? Uh, source access, imagine if, if like, how can I put this in layman's terms? Imagine if we have a car and UD, UE, Unreal Engine is the car. We're not allowed to touch the car. We're just allowed to put paint jobs on it, basically. Mm -hmm. So, so having really source access, prototyping, but yeah. Yeah. having source access would be able to like tear down the entire engine, maybe put in like a V8 in it. I don't know much about cars, but you get my point. Um, <laughs> I'm a motorcycle yeah. guy, but yeah. Um, oh, well, let's try to yeah. be fair, Unreal 5 already, uh, we got Chaos vehicles, or the Chaos physics engine. I think they're already doing vehicles with it, so it might not even, uh, it might be very quickly. We might be able to prototype very quickly on that by the time we get there, which should be soon. Team. Yeah, we'll be talking about UE5 in more detail tomorrow, but just right. from what I can see, with the differences between developing on UDK and UE5 is it's going to be a lot easier on UE5 to say the least because I'm kind of an outsider at this point because I'm one of the newest devs so my perspective is probably going to be different from the other devs who've been here for a while. It's not very easy to get into UDK development because a, a lot of the links are outdated. Like, there's like Stack Overflow threads from like 20 years ago at this point. Not 20 years, but you get my point, so. The main challenge with UDK is obviously the engine is bursting out of the scene already with what we've put in. Plus, there aren't really that many resources that I can use as a new dev to basically contribute. I mean, um, it, I had a decent chunk of time when I first initially joined to learn the engine and get some bug fixes going, but had I not had that time, it would have been much more of a challenge to get going in the UDK. And still, um, I think it's still a challenge to do anything in UDK without having sufficient knowledge of the project at both Tibson and Renix. So, with UE5, I'm hoping to have an entirely different dev flow and basically be able to get out content faster. And we'll talk about that in more detail tomorrow. Yeah. All right, so we had another question, I think, that was coming up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so... yeah, one of the questions was, uh, what are we doing as far as anti-spawn camping? 
Uh, I'll answer this one. So, basically, your main base has defensive turrets. And they are not, like, amazing, but they will protect you from getting spawn camp. Like, nobody's... It's not going to be in, like, Battlefield 2 when somebody sits behind you and just kills you as soon as you spawn. Like, the good old days, but yeah. Uh, so you have ways to mitigate spawn camp. And let's say a spawn point is overrun by the enemy. Let's say one of the points is overrun by the enemy. You have a variety of options to spawn around. Like you can spawn on a friend, you can spawn on one of the APCs, you can just spawn on a drop pod if your base is getting artillery struck or whatever. So you should ideally never be in a position where you're just getting killed as soon as you spawn. Yeah, I noticed that about that. I haven't had any issues unless you just spawn an APC and blow up, but that's mm. that's the risk you take. Ooh, a disruptor! I'm gonna jump in that guy. I really like the feature that we included on this one, where you have a shield you can generate. Also, um, I think it's given the. Disruptor, like an added function, is kind of like a. a uh, what's the right word for it? Well, and then of course artillery comes in and says, nope, not today. Standing by. Something like that. You want that artillery gone? I can make it gone. Oh, <laughs> you can? I Are you can in a bomber? <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I have other things. Oh. Look, it's got, okay when I use Hunter Seekers, I created created. my features. <laughs> my we got like three APCs very for Nod coming in, oh my god. Oh, somebody uh, just killed him. Scan with that artillery again. Oh. Oh, well. And that's game. Mission failed. And we lost. That's okay, though. Yeah, yeah also, yeah, it's somebody like... had stated on chat, yeah, the Paladin, I think we realized after a while that the Paladin had the same feature <laughs> as the Disruptor. <laughs> It came up in chat before I even I knew about that. But then we saw it and we're like, that's very convenient. Because it also means the code was already there. <laughs> but... <clears throat> yeah. well, let's just go back to strength yeah. site. I, honest to goodness, I... As a small segue while we're switching maps, yeah, I... I didn't even notice how many vehicles Unreal Tournament 3 had. It's actually... I should actually go back and play through them there. It's actually a very interesting array of vehicles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we know what the next map is? What uh, is it's going to be screen site, probably. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, um, I think I saw a question regarding ion storms or something like that. So yeah, there are ion storms in game. Lightning strikes can hurt you and kill you and stuff. But it doesn't disable air vehicles and hover vehicles like Tiberian Sun. I don't know if it's a good idea to implement that feature. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a little... Awesome. It's, in RTS, yeah, sure. In FPS, literally just your air vehicle just falling out of the sky suddenly is probably more frustrating. <laughs> or than having to ground yourself and it's like, what now? It's just, it'll be, it's more annoying for a shooter. That's for sure. You guys mind if I switch to Nod this time around? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. And maybe on the same team. Yeah. I was GDI in Phoenix, so I figured we could show off some of Nod's stuff. Oh, I'm still on GDI. There we go. Alright. So personally, um, I really gravitate towards the infantry and recon classes, and I really like Nod's light machine gun. It's a, it's a haymaker. Um, but you'll also the find, in general. yeah, the uh, the standard weapons that the infantry get though, um, the assault rifles and pulse rifles, are a pretty good balance. Um, you actually have uh, alt fires on them, where um, GDI can kind of, it's like a, I almost want to say it's like a little miniature version of the disruptor cannon, 
Um, and then the, the Nod assault rifle gets a grenade launcher on the bottom. So you have some anti-armor and some uh, anti-infantry capabilities rolled into the assault class. On top of the um, healing and uh, ammo kit abilities that they have as kind of like their special feature. Um, there's a question on the stream from down the barrel. I'd like to actually go more into that if that's okay with you guys. Yeah. So, uh, I've been religiously coming to the playtests because, just because I really enjoy seeing the balancing process that's going around. So, uh, one of our developers, Math, he's not here, but uh, he's uh, like, whenever we're testing, he usually sets some crazy scenarios up where we have like five, ten tick tanks just assault the point and just see what happens to like check the dynamics between different classes. And um, every playtest, we see like something new, something different poking out. So, but despite that, you can really just play the way you want and not be limited to a single role. So, Let's say there's lots of vehicles on the enemy team. As Yosh just mentioned, you can pull out the Hunter Seeker and just rain down hell on them. Or you can gather your friends and like pull out rocket launchers with javelins and just like knock them down one by one. Or you can just try and counter them with your vehicles of your own. So not only that, there's also the one more option, which I'd like to mention, and that's my favorite option, actually. You can go as a cyborg and uh, Mark, you should actually showcase that after you die here. Yep. The cyborg and the zone trooper have weapons that are somewhat like, not like super weapons, but like pocket super weapons. So they have a massive portable ion cannon, or they have a big, like, portable obelisk laser. So those weapons you can use to counter vehicles, but to balance them, obviously, their ammo is a little bit, a bit more limited. So. Basically, you have a lot of options to counter something else on the map, and I think that's the best way to approach this, because a lot of the problems I see in most FPS games is when you put something forward, there's usually just one counter for it, and having multiple counters to something, I think, brings out the most interesting parts of gameplay. So, Mark is right now using the Cyborg Trooper, and the Cyborg is a version of the Heavy Trooper. So, if you checked out the loadout screen while he was spawning in, he picked his last ability as Cyborg Augmentation. So, instead of a, just like a regular support trooper, he's now a Cyborg. He has legs that are metal, and he can run really fast. So. If you can take a look at the bottom right of the screen, you'll see an ability meter ticking down. So our cyborg has this ability where he can run super fast, but he needs to ramp up to that. And not only that, while he can run really fast, if he touches anything, that thing is not going to be there for long. So what that means Can't is- Caveat to that. Yeah. Destructible walls. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh yeah, we should show that as well. So, Mark, to your right, I think there's a few destructible walls that I'd like you to run through. Oh yeah, these ones here? Yeah, maybe the one in front of you or the one to your, towards your right. Just sprint up to them and just try to burst through them. Yeah, basically, <laughs> you can... <laughs> so, so, with the cyborg, you can basically run through stuff with your super ability. So, if you have that stamina, when you're running up to stuff, if you hit them, if it's a wall, it will break. If it's a vehicle, it will stop in its tracks and maybe get thrown back a little, okay? And if it's a person, oh, oh no. J just imagine you're getting run over by, you know, a soccer mom's SUV or something, yeah? <laughs> so, Why a soccer mom's SUV? Soccer that's very, that's very specific. Yeah. I, I have issues. Anyway, um, <laughs> so basically, yeah, the cyborg, um, I'm not saying it because I worked on it. I think it's one of the best classes in uh, TS right now. And it's really enjoyable to just run into people. You feel unstoppable. And I'd like to also bounce back and maybe uh, take a few bits from the previous question. When we were balancing this, uh, we went over several, several iterations. Uh, me and uh, one of the lead art devs actually sat down and played around with it and we were like, hey, maybe this thing is not so good with it. Actually, 
like, for example, the cyborg would be able to jump really high with his stamina, and he could double jump. So, and also on top of that, as Mark demonstrated just now, he can heal in Tiberium. So, <laughs> he was pretty <laughs> OP. For, he was extremely OP for a while, and there was a situation in a playtest where I was just bullying vehicles by jumping around them, double jumping, and just hitting them with my like tiny pea shooter uh, chain gun, and they couldn't do anything to me. So, um, yeah, obviously the me meta is going to be developed by the players. Like, I'm a developer. I don't know how you guys are going to play this game because. Um, video games always come out and the players find something completely new that the developers never thought of, but every playtest we're seeing what's going well, what's not going so well, what's poking out, and we're just trying to figure out a way to balance that stuff, so. There is going to be a meta def definitely, but right now it's not for, it's not certain, yeah. Oh yeah, Mr. Grayson, I was going to say, uh, that I think the cyborg is a great example of where the team's got to take a lot of creative liberties. Uh, because if you look at the original Tiberian Sun, you look at the cyborg, it's almost like the exact opposite, right? They're slow. Uh, oh. When you damage them, they, their legs break off, <laughs> and they, they wiggle <laughs> around. Uh, yeah, but the only yeah, similarity yeah. they have is they heal in Tiberian. But no. if you think about it, that's not going to be fun in a shooter. Like, so, who wants to be... <laughs> that's, there's a caveat to that. Cyborgs also, they're technically slower. They're not, they're not as agile as the other tree units. So they're still slow. Oh, they just have straight line. And they're fast, but they're not agile. I still mean, they just, once they get yeah, killed, exactly. they're faster. Exactly. But you also, you strafe slower and technically walk slower. Um, Mark, why don't you launcher. pick one of the... Yeah, pick the napalm launcher. That thing is one of my favorite weapons, actually. I thoroughly enjoy it. It's like a flame shotgun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, if any one of you has played Fallout it recently, or Fallout 3 or New Vegas, I think it was in New Vegas, uh, there was a flamer that spat out like balls of flame and they, they would ignite whenever they hit, and this little guy is something like that basically, where you can absolutely go to town on infantry, it, and it's also kinda useful against, useful against weapons, but yeah, so the cyborg has, as I mentioned, access to these weapons. And, they're somewhat like pocket super weapons, so they're good against some things, but he has limited ammo, so... Uh, Mark, if you can maybe get into a firefight, you'll see how fast he runs out of ammo, and that's the danger of using the cyborg. And as Lava said, um, we did have to take some creative liber liberties with the cyborg, because having a slow unit that is kind of strong, but, like, can heal in Tiberium, but, like, isn't really fast or agile, is not a very good idea to put in a video game where it's where everyone else is kind of fast paced so yes we had to take some creative liberties but i still think this current implementation of the cyborg is extremely fun to play so we can move on to another question yeah another good question uh, that's kind of been floating around is you know if, uh, if other people if they see this they, if they want to join the team to help uh, the question was, what could they study individually to later help out, or, or you know, like what uh, what are we looking for as far as uh, different departments? What do we need? To um, if I could jump in real quick here. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> we are still looking for more testers. If you are available on Saturdays at about this time, is when we usually do play test. Yeah, even if you've already applied, uh, feel free to apply again. You can find it on our website under the Jobs tab, which is the tester, the tester uh, link there. Let's try the portable obelisk. Oh yeah, definitely. Give that one a go, I think. And make sure you face vehicles with that to see how that plays out against that. And maybe throw in a couple AT mines while you're fighting to see how they work. Like, yeah. the, cyborg, the cyborg itself is, like, Kind of like a jack of all trades, depending on what you pull out from the loadout. So, yeah. um, besides that, let me also there. put in a request for what you might want to study um, tomorrow when we're discussing UE5. I'll be for pro for the programming side at least. I'll be explaining what you'll need to study to basically be able to help out with programming in UE5. But 
Um, for UDK, I, I don't really have many recommendations because besides just reading the docs, maybe playing around with a downloaded build of UDK, maybe downloading the, the Renex SDK and messing around with it, there aren't really that many resources online that, like, there, there aren't many Udemy tutorials is what I'm saying because... Uh, for me, at least, I prefer Udemy tutorials, and a lot of people my age also do, so... There are a few tutorials online that you could follow, uh, for UDK at least, but for UE5, we'll be talking about that in more detail tomorrow, so... Programming-wise... Oh, somebody just I'm... dropped an eye on Barrage. Oh, damn. Programming-wise, I'm okay with, like, people who would want to help out with UDK, I'm okay with people who want to talk, help out with UE5, and, yeah, we'll be talking about that more tomorrow, and other departments, uh, you'd have to ask those guys. Looks like we got a bunch of people coming down the bridge here. Okay, uh, I want to talk about a feature that we haven't talked about yet, I don't think, but, um, squad? has a bigger emphasis in this game mode because you can see in the bottom left next to the minimap you can see your squad mates but what you should also notice is the squad rank at the bottom so instead of having individual rank up what we have is a, your squad ranks up together and as you rank up you gain access to different squad powers so that Ion Barrage that was called in, that's one of the squad powers you have access to. So the idea is that the final squad power, which is the Ion Cannon and a Cluster Missile, only one squad on each team can have access to that. So the best squad that ranks up the quickest will get the access to the super weapon and can you use it. So if you guys are really good and know how to work well together, you'd be able to call in the eye can against the enemy team. Um, about that super weapon stuff, by the way. Um, this kind of emphasizes the difficulties we have with UDK because uh, one of my first tasks when I joined the team was figuring out a way to fix a bug with the cluster missile, which is the um, not version of the ion cannon, basically. It's not an ion cannon, but it's the counterpart. So with UDK, one of the difficulties we face are A, lack of resources, B, lack of data structures. And that's a programming term, so I'll have to put it in layman terms again. What um, this this bug has been fixed, but this bug had been absolutely just crashing everyone. So, what the issue was, what what the issue with the cluster missile was, basically, whenever you called in a cluster missile, as you notice, there are destructible little walls around the map, right? And if one of those cl cluster missiles hit that wall, it would tell the server, "Hey, you've been hit. Damage yourself, buddy." And how that worked was we had a loop where it would iterate over every single piece of wall and check if that was the wall that was hit. And this is not a very great thing to do, but what that meant was, since the cluster missile is, as the name suggests, a cluster missile, imagine hundreds of little bomblets calling the same loop over and over and over again. And this caused a crash in UDK called a million iteration crash or something like that. I don't know the exact number, but yeah. And it's the solution to this, yeah, not infinite, but too much for it, the it's engine. Called, to, it's, yeah, it's it, yeah, that's too, what it calls itself, but it's not necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. too much for the engine to handle. And the obvious uh, solution to that is to use a map. So imagine if you're scrolling through a phone book one page at a time. The initial implementation was, every single time a, a, a wall was damaged, scroll through the phone book to find which one it was, and that was what was causing the crash. And the obvious solution to that is to basically have a map where you know which uh, page belongs to which wall and just scroll to that immediately. But the problem is, uh, UDK doesn't have that data structure. And every other programming language 
in use in the industry right now has something like that. It has data structures. If any one of you take a programming class in the future, you will learn about data structures. So, um, UDK does not have a hash map in our implementation of it, from what I could find. So, what I did was, to solve this bug, I just pulled out a JSON object, and a JSON object is kind of implemented like a hash map, basically. And using that, I was able to fix it, but just being able to, like, just being, just not being able to have that data structure hamstringed me so much that it took me just like a week to work through that. So, um, one of the guys in the chat is asking, couldn't you just make one? That's what I mean. Like, I don't have source access, so what I'm doing is just, you know, messing with the paint in such a way to try to make it an F1 car, basically, yeah? I so, think, yeah, but yeah, I think, I think we get what you're saying. Yeah. Also, not having multi layer arrays is. <clears throat> <sighs> yeah, yeah, I, I imagine you there issues. are a lot of things missing in Unreal scripts <laughs> that most programming languages just have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have here? Well, it's almost an hour, but I imagine we could go on a bit longer. Sure. Yeah. Try to fulfill any question. Let's see here. Uh, how many maps? Two D arrays. That's the word. Good job. Yeah, I was like, I was like, multi layer arrays. I was like, this yeah, work yeah. for this. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. He said it in chat. He corrected me. Thank you. He <laughs> gotcha. Uh, yeah. How many maps are we anticipating on that release? Three guaranteed. Four most likely. Five if you're good. Yeah. So. Oh, oh, does blue tip go boom? One shot. No. no. Oh, here's another interesting one. Uh, destructible bridges. Oh, destructible bridges? Um, no, because level design wise, it's just really complicated to do. It's also, possible. Uh, oh, it's set up for it. I believe, yeah, it's like it's possible. It hasn't really been necessary considering in an RTS, your units won't just walk down the gullet and, you know, f forget the bridge. Uh, blowing up a bridge in an FPS, unless it's like a massive chasm, it really doesn't mean much. You just walk down there and then walk across. Yeah. So, like, the map would have to be built around it, which is possible if anybody wants to make a map afterwards or after release that incorporates that. But, yeah, like, it would have to be, like, a 100-foot drop that was... You can't get across this without the bridge kind of deal. Mark's actually near one of the only bridges in the game yet, right? Mm-hmm. mistaken. Yeah, this yeah. one. Have we talked about the Black Hands, uh, stealth? Pretty sure we already can, or we've already shown that. A lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, that hasn't changed too much. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> uh, good old Ion Barrage. We are the uh, let's see. Maybe gives the uh, engineer some love. I don't know where it is right now, but look towards the center of the map, Mark. What's that? Ah, uh, center of the map. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh god, this game 100% needs a seizure warning now. <laughs> <laughs> I've never watched the eye on Ken. Yeah, the explosion, how it just kind of like, oh my gosh. <laughs> the the pre-explosion when it starts flashing. Duly noted, we might need to put a seizure warning. <laughs> yeah, so if you're the best squad, get that. that. That's what you need to do. Work together. And there's the cluster missiles. <laughs> okay. I guess GDI and Nod both really wanted that spot gone. The bane of my existence, cluster missiles.
Do you like Michael Bay movies? You'll love upcoming Firestorm. <laughs> Just explosions. <laughs> but we don't have Umagod, so how are we gonna have hot girls like Michael Bay? <laughs> There's time. <laughs> uh, any more questions, Doug? No. Uh, no. Basically, everything else is kind of more related to stuff in the future. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can leave that for tomorrow. Pull yeah. one from Discord if you guys. We might have another uh, map to show off tomorrow, right? Is there? Can we show off Wasteland tomorrow. Wasteland. Has it been optimized and fixed? I think so. Uh, Mark, you want to demonstrate the Tick Tank's ability to deploy, maybe? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, somebody that. asked about that. I also, uh, that. To, to answer someone's interaction with water, uh, it'll be roughly about the same as it is in Red X, where you can swim, but you cannot shoot while you're swimming in Firestorm. <laughs> so there's that. Uh-oh, I'm getting shot at. Let's go this way. Notice that people haven't been using the tower and just map a bunch. What tower? I think that the tower. Radio tower. Radio you can radios. climb that. Yep. I, th I think people have been sniped off. Uh oh. Too much uh oh. Now. Uh oh. We got an ion strike. Uh oh. Oh, by the way, we haven't talked about music or anything. To be fair, I don't think they'll even hear it on stream. Oop. Yeah, how many tracks we've got in the game now? It's it's quite a lot. Well, I was gonna say uh, the wind music. That too. Which I still can't pin which CNC song this is, but I know for a fact this is a Tim Dawn. There's a one of the riffs in this wind music is from Tim Dawn. And that's game. Mission fail. One more, or call it. I'm down for one more if you guys want. Give the people what they want. Conquest player economy is not really <laughs> an issue. If we uh, bring back a hybrid game mode, then we'll see. It'll probably oh. never be as as important as say red. Or more important. Well, we'll see when, that, when the time comes. Uh, post launch stuff. Yeah, yeah, I talked. Yeah, about that's that. post. That's post launch stuff. So post launch wise, so after Firestorm officially releases, there will be some support because our focus will shift to UE five, but there are definitely people who still can't leave UDK for some reason. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so it's because it's gonna be. Oops, when UE5 development really starts, it's going to be a programmer's game. Like, 90% of it's going to be programming. So, uh, I don't know if you heard the the usual stories, even when Renegade X was in development. Yeah, as Havoc said, for the most part, uh, development through, like, 2008 to, to 2014 time was just artists waiting on programmers to implement systems for the art to actually exist for, like... You can't really uh, model a guns and put the right sockets and points and everything on them until you know how guns are going to work. Ammo and tools yeah. Ready. yeah, but what, what should we expect post-launch of Firestorm? Oh, I guess we're switching maps. I mean, 
not all of us are just gonna be like UE5 or UDK. Yeah, for like yeah. there's some yeah. people staying with UDK, but yeah, and then no, you can also like, we might hybridize. Like yeah, we can still yeah. work on some UDK stuff. Like we're yeah, not gonna be like saying. oh that's you guys have a critical bug in UDK that crashes the game after five seconds. Well, it sucks no, for you guys. We're you. <laughs> no, we're not helping. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna be like that. <laughs> No, I'm gonna stick around with UDK as well. I assume Yoshi's as well. So we'll have, we'll have, we'll be working on both because even now, sometimes with UDK, there's a lot of times where we have to wait on some stuff like some art assets, some programming, whatever. So it's just gonna give us more of an opportunity to be able to focus on something else if we're just waiting for something. Yeah. So it's not it's not gonna be like splitting the team. Basically, we're just gonna have an extra product on the line. Yeah. Well, here we go. Pharaoh, take two. Fight for the Brotherhood. Wonder if I can oh. try and show off the attack cycle really quick. This is my chance. One of the questions on stream is will there be a mode like some people made a mod for the game Squad, where you can play it like an RTS and build a base, and players need to collect resources. Um, I don't know for UDK, because for UDK post-launch, the aim will be to be able to implement the original vision in a way that gives you more than 5 FPS. For UE5, uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, one of the things planned for post-launch is releasing the SDK with access to the old base building game mode and assault right. game mode. So that'll all it'll be there. It'll be, be able to be enabled. Yeah, so Just, yeah. the community has the power to essentially say, I fixed, I solved the issue. Uh, Let me show the uh, burrowing feature real quick. Oh. I was going to say, somebody asked how, how, how different is UE5 programming from UDK. Uh, actually, not night and day. Uh, the languages, obviously, is two totally different languages. We're using C++ mostly for uh, Unreal 5. And Unreal 3 is Unreal Script. Well, UDK is Unreal Script. Uh, but since Unreal Script is kind of like a bastard child between Java and C++, uh, it's not a huge leap. Not to mention Unreal 3, all of the Unreal engines sort of use a lot of the same terminology and hierarchy when it comes to their classes. So it's really easy to go from UDK to UE5 in terms of like, you sort of know where you're looking for stuff already. It's just gonna be written in a different language and it, obviously things were updated, hopefully. Plus. But like, uh, to be fair, I literally, to do the Orca Bombers, uh, you're on Nod, you can't show that. But the Orca Bombers, uh, the targeting marker for it, I basically just s stole code from Unreal 5 <laughs> to do it. <laughs> yeah, I 100% I was able to just copy-paste it and then convert it very slightly to work in Unreal Script. Adding on to that, yeah. Um, C++, having worked with it for like two years, I can say. Um, UDK is much more forgiving, like we can make mistakes and we won't blow our foot off, but with C++, mistakes are going to be a lot more costly, especially maybe design mistakes. There's a, There's been a lot of instances in my professional life where I have been parts of teams where they have programmed themselves in a corner and massive rewrites were ordered, so I'd like to avoid that with UE5 if possible. So. Not a, we're gonna have a lot more power, but with great power comes great responsibility or whatever the hell that line is, so... It's also gonna be a challenge to be able to keep things properly maintained and properly built and properly written and designed. So, that's something to consider with C++. Ah. <laughs> is that an Orca Bomber? Also, yeah, to be, yeah, to be fair though, a lot of the programming team has learned a, a lot throughout working in Unreal 3, like, I think we might bring it up all the time, like every stream, people understand interfaces better, so it's a lot easier to organize and, you know, prototype and write code. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so you don't have to, you don't end up with like enormous classes and then classes that technically do the same thing, but people have to rewrite all of the code and copy and paste and have gigantic like blocks of text or pl mm. blocks of code that literally do the exact same thing that could have been solved by one interface and that's it. <laughs> I, I still start sweating when I open TS Controller just because of the size of that thing. Yeah, we have like, yeah, having, oh god, like TS, like RX Pawn or like TS Controller, the controller classes, <laughs> having like tens of thousands of lines of code that could have been solved. But that's the thing. Also, it was both, uh, you know, newer programmers and the fact that people didn't know what direction they were really going to go in. So some things were retroactively changed to interfaces after we knew how they were going to work, but now we more or less know what we want to do. So for Unreal 5, it should be pretty quick and the code base should be a lot cleaner. Cleaner, yeah. yeah. Um, not, a, not only that, um, since it's going to be C++, we can make things a lot more modular. And that, that would mean we can change futures quicker, we can add new futures quicker, and that's a big plus. So uh, one of the questions in the stream is, I took a college course in C++, is that enough? So um, first of all, I'd ask, what grade did you get from that course? So after that, I would ask, uh, what projects have you made with C++? Because um, learning a programming language isn't just about taking a course on Udemy or something else you really need to apply it for that to stick basically so um i uh, if you if you're confident enough to you know give it a go and maybe try sure and apply also it, definitely small yeah. caveat remember uh -huh. unreal engine c plus plus is a little different from regular c plus plus just because of i think basically it's c plus plus but also not c plus plus in the way that it calls uh, certain functions and how some of the things are set up. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain just on stream without like looking at it and showing examples. But yeah. I, mean, I mean, yeah, it's not going to be bog standard C++. You're not going to be yeah. making like a, com a, a desktop application from scratch. It's not yeah. going to be that, that hard. Uh, but of course, whenever you bring in manual memory management and stuff like that, which are like core parts of C++, like, you're going to have a bit of a challenge. But if you feel like you can give it a go, and if you feel like you want to learn, why not? Just apply and give you a go. Yeah, got him. I love the attack cycle. Yeah, thanks this is probably my favorite vehicle out of everything. The attack cycle has bullied, bullied me in game too many times at this point. <laughs> <laughs> It's payback for all the times I bullied people with my double jump cyborg, so I don't mind. And there's a handbrake, so you can skirt, skirt around the map all the time. Like it's, um, I've seen people do some pretty wacky stunts with it. I can't really do it, but you know, I'm trying. All right. Um, I don't know if anyone noticed, but we do kind of have a new original vehicle in this game. Yeah. Oh yeah, the hover uh, Yeah. We call it the Hover IFB. Now I will probably call it the Hover Infantry Vehicle. Oh, uh, I feel like... But, yeah, we don't really have a name a convention. Name. It needs a name. name. We're, not doing, we're not doing what the Navy did. I refuse. I, I want to call it the Kestrel, but some people might call it the Falcon Never. from Tiberian S. It's going to be called Hover McHover Face if we allow the community to name it. <laughs> it's a great name. Uh, I could save you tic I'm sorry. I could have saved that tic tac, but no. Come on. Oh, oh god. Yeah! I won that fight, but at what cost? It seems like you're still in a good position for me, you just need to prepare your. Uh oh, I think I, uh, oh, I'm good. I thought I got stuck for a second. Yeah, please excuse my potato PC, he's, he's just a little bit on the, on the rough side here.
talking about potato pieces, um, there was actually a question about the system requirements. Woo! And yes, but not too much, hopefully. So a lot of us in the team have potato PCs, including me, because PC, PC components are expensive. <laughs> I don't have a potato PC. I have a <laughs> computer that's a decade old. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to try to keep it uh, as optimized as possible so everyone possible can run it, because, like, the, the way I got introduced to Remix was playing it at a LAN party, so I'd want that to be available to people. I just, I also want to just really point out from uh, the audio side, oh, I'm dead. Um, you can kind of hear some of our, uh, our in-game players communicating with each other. Um, we've kind of thought of a lot of different lines for each of the different um, scenarios that your character can be in. Um, for example, when I was healing uh, math.py earlier, the engineer will acknowledge it and say thanks. Um, your units call out when they're reloading and so you'll hear a lot of this different like heat of the battle screaming and yelling while you're in there and it really kind of brings the whole thing to life um, even when you're in a vehicle when you uh, take somebody down your your character will kind of sneer at them or make like a little snide remark um, to just be like yeah hey, yeah take that Someone just asked, are there going to be taunts? Uh, you know, like in X, you have the taunt menu. Yes, there are. We do have taunts. Um, they have not uh, been implemented quite yet, but they are. Um, they were recorded and they're in the engine. So you're going to have both kill celebration lines and um, some taunts that you can throw out at the other players. Also, the taunts kind of get triggered automatically when you like, kill someone, when you maybe use an ability or something like that. When you, even like your character automatically speaks, basically according to the situation. So, uh, let's say you just pulled uh -oh. off a ion strike on someone. Oh, looks like you're stuck. Um, your character <laughs> will re react accordingly, basically. Uh, speaking of abilities, manually. yeah, they can't do it manually. Anymore. Uh, speaking of abilities, you, uh, Mark, with next life you might want to maybe switch to engineer and show them the sandbag ability. Yes, that I can do. Um, oh, there's some stairs. Let's, yeah, maybe you can. Yeah. Yeah, we. I don't think I'd like Fortnite dances in the game to be honest, because I mean, I I, I get killed a lot, but yeah. <laughs> I think the tone of the game is a little too serious for that. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's the end of the world, so... We've we definitely... <laughs> it's the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the end of the world, so... I think we, we definitely have some Easter eggs that we've planted in the maps that are kind of on the humorous side, but yeah, on, in terms of just... Nothing super outwardly humorous. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's tasteful, I'd say. So it can be subtle, obviously, you know, you can break up, break it up a little every once in a while. But, like, it needs to be subtle. Yeah, I think I we do have two different the, artillery the shelling right now. Looks like it. Yeah, I do love the tone of the game, though, I think it really captures the feel of the tones. Yeah, Especially definitely. Feral. Especially in Oh, oh, damn. Oh, no, I just lost my, uh... Hello, artillery. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Get that disrupt. He's getting get, me get, now. Get the bomb. Ooh, we're so close. <laughs> oh, I don't. I think you're gonna. Yeah, we yeah, left. I got left him. The infantry as well. Yeah, he's nice. dead. Um, can you demonstrate how far you can shoot with the artillery for one of the guys yeah. in chat? Let me aim at that service station over there. That's 497 I mean, meters away, and you, you can see I'm hitting it. You could just technically hit anything with an artillery if you're lucky enough. So yeah. yes, you no. could kill an orca, but so it's yeah, I mean, it's... like the distance, basically, how far can you shoot? 
Oh, somebody also asked if you can kill orcas with artillery. I mean, um, if you hit them, yeah, sure. Anything's possible. Let me try and hit the uh, the forgotten scrapyard. But yeah, this is a great vehicle for shelling outposts. If you were trying to work as a team to capture it, you could have somebody sit back and hammer it with artillery while you have your squad move in. Uh, I'm probably about to get bombed. Oh, yeah. Someone's asking, there's this RD and the original RD. What's the difference between two? By original RT, I mean, I think they mean the MLRS, right? The oh, Renegade X artillery, maybe? Yeah, yeah the, the multiple... Renex. The uh, multiple yeah, I'm not rocket sure launcher. Talking. Yeah, I guess we're not quite sure what the... What he's asking. What you're asking about. Yeah, if you could clarify. Oh, I think Some... just to kind of... If I, I'm assuming it's related to the artillery that's in Renegade X, if so, that would probably be that you have to deploy this one in order to get that long range. Oh, that's a hunter seeker. Um, Plus, the so, original artillery from Renex doesn't really spawn in any of the bases. It's more of a uh, secondary objective capturable that you can get. This is my Uh, oh, yeah, the Juggernaut, juggernaut, oper juggernaut. I, uh, juggernaut operates the same. Mm -hmm. And you do still have MRLS in this game, but they don't really serve that same function of artillery in, in Firestorm. I think in Ren X, you just kind of had them as this. Oh, jeez. Hello. Get out of here. Bye bye, Orca. But yeah, you, you did kind of have the MRLS as this, like, um,. This unit that held back and just was kind of like your your shelling unit, whereas in this game the hover MRLS is a lot more mobile, um, and you have the juggernaut who kind of fulfills that shelling role. But we also I think that there's probably more of a limit on the number of juggernauts and artillery in play, so you don't just have you know, five different people that are spamming it at any given point. It's a special unit that you kind of want to protect because you've only got one or two shots at it. I mean, that goes for every vehicle, because since you can't buy vehicles and you have a limited amount of them spawning, mm -hmm. you really got to be careful about not losing them. And they are powerful vehicles, that's why. <laughs> that's why the Hunter Seeker drone is such a breath of fresh air, because you can actually counter them now. But yeah. Oh, he meant he he responded again. He said he means the original artillery from Tiberian Sun. I mean, um, the original artillery, from... like from the uh, yeah. original RTS game. I'd have to look that up. Just from what I can tell, um, just from having experience playing Tiberian Sun, you know this this one has a firing mode where you you can um, at short range hit something while you're not deployed. Um, whereas in Tiberian Sun, I think the only time that the artillery could fire was if it was deployed. Oh. <laughs> Got him. But, uh, yeah, it is kind of just like a, uh, it has a very, very limited defensive capabilities when it's moving. Uh, but it does deploy in the same style as the artillery from the original game. Um, there probably are some differences between you know, that voxel and our in-game model as well. Oh jeez, I'm getting out of here. I am outnumbered. I wish on any of the subterranean vehicles. Because I mean, we actually have animations for them now. I think we have them um, the last one, right? right? Yeah, we saw the map? APC yeah. a little while ago. Yeah. I actually want to show off the engineer's special ability before the match ends, but you have two points, so. Engineer special ability. Wow. Yes. Let me do quickly. that. Quickly. Quickly. How quickly can you do it? Probably not very. <laughs> not fast enough for that. No, you don't need to pick anything. Just spawn. <laughs> Is it the X button? Yeah, just press Oh yeah, press there X. we go. <laughs> There's our sandbags. Or press and hold it to throw it around. Oh yeah, you can do that. 
Yeah, so this one's kind of like a call in ambulance, but not for me ability, because it's actually surprisingly useful in a firefight when you need to hide behind something. Yeah. But yeah, as, men <laughs> as mentioned previously, if a cyborg is running at you, uh, it doesn't do very well, Make apparently. Sure I just found that out today, actually. I didn't expect the yeah, cyborg just to run right through them. <laughs> yeah, run right through it and demolish you like some sort of. Yeah. To be fair, Cyborg should have like a one in a thousand chance of just playing the Kool Aid Man soundbite <laughs> whenever they run through something, but <clears throat> that's just me. I mean, All right. if it were. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's the end of the match, so. Yep. Do you think that's it for today? Yeah, I think yeah, it looks like a it. good point to wrap it up. Yep. Okay, there we go. Now we're back. Yep. Nice. But yeah, so that was the that was the end of the in-game stream for today, right? Yes. Yep. So we'll have another one tomorrow, same exact time. We'll continue discussions, mainly focus on the UE5 side of things and questions. Since we've always been like teasing like how we're going to go into UE5 and stuff. And we'll also be talking about what you need to learn to maybe help us out with UE5, programming-wise. Yeah. Yep. Talk more yeah. technical stuff with, like, 3D modeling and programming and game design talks. All that fun stuff. All right. Well, yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thanks, for everybody, for tuning in. Um, don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything related to Firestorm's development uh, by joining our Discord. You can go to discord.gg slash totemarts and uh, stay in tune with everything that the community's up to, as well as get involved with Renegade X if uh, you wanted to get some, uh, some action in the CNC universe uh, in advance. But yeah, that's everything. Um, we're looking forward to doing it again tomorrow. Um, so come back at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, whatever that translates to for everybody else's time zone. Um, but yeah, that'll be when we do our next stream, part two of our demo Firestorm. Alrighty, and that's everything. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, folks. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>